Dr. Ken Landau, thanks for watching. Let's talk about a treatment for high blood pressure. Let's talk about Losartan. Losartan, the trade name is Cozar. It's an angiotensin receptor blocker, very commonly used when it's combined with hydrochlorothiazide. It's called Cozar, and it was approved for use in the United States in 1995. Now it's off patent, so you can get the generic form very inexpensively. It was actually the first marketed drug in its family, and it's on the World Health Organization list of essential medications. Now, this drug is a first-line antihypertensive for people who are over age 60, and it will decrease your risk for fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events, like heart attack and stroke. And it especially is good if you happen to have extra thick left ventricle, we call it left ventricular hyperplasia, because your heart has had to pump against such significant resistance for some time. It's kind of like lifting weights. If you lift the weight, you're going to get big muscle. Well, you don't want to get a big muscle in your heart because your heart has to pump extra. However, it doesn't seem to reverse the left ventricular hypertrophy nearly as well in African Americans as it does in Caucasians. And all of the standard doses of all of the standard blood pressure pills are basically geared to give you exactly the same amount of benefit. It's just which class of medicines do you want to take. So the diuretics work just as well, the ACE inhibitors work just as well, the calcium blockers work just as well. Newer, higher priced medications on the market, they don't work any better than the older, very inexpensive medicines. Now, why is it such an important reason to treat high blood pressure? It's important to treat high blood pressure because it's a significant risk for hardening of the arteries, and then hardening of the arteries goes on to cause some sort of major catastrophe, a heart attack, a stroke, or cardiovascular death. And also, it will decrease the atherosclerosis, is going to decrease the amount of blood going to your brain, may well increase the incidence of Alzheimer's disease, decrease the amount of blood going to your kidney, cause chronic kidney disease. Actually, atherosclerotic coronary vascular disease or vascular disease in general kills more people than diabetes or cigarettes or obesity or drinking excessive amount of alcohol. And a lot of people have high blood pressure and are unaware of it because it tends not to cause any symptoms for decades before it knocks you off. And a significant number of people who are on therapy don't have the ideal results because they don't realize that treating high blood pressure is more than simply taking a pill. You have to pay attention to diet. You have to cut down the amount of salt. You have to cut down the amount of a variety of substances that you get at McDonald's and Burger King and Pizza Hut. You have to cut out some of that stuff. You have to pay attention. You have to have more fruit and vegetable. If you do that, you're going to be okay. If you don't do that, Unfortunately, simply taking a pill is not going to be adequate. And if you're a guy and you don't pay any attention, well, remember, it's cutting down the blood flow going to a lot of organs, so it can cause the heart disease. I told you about the heart, the kidney disease. It also causes impotence, one of the major causes of impotence. And the more risk factors you have, the greater benefit you get from taking Losartan from bringing your blood pressure down. So if your blood pressure is 170 on the systolic side, you're going to get more benefit than it if it's, say, 150. And if it's 150, you'll get more benefit than if you start off and it's 130. And also, if you have other risk factors that are added in there, you're a smoker, you're diabetic, you have elevated cholesterol, you will get more benefit from taking the pill than somebody whose blood pressure is 130 over 80 and doesn't have any other risk factors. Now, the question is, how do you take your blood pressure? Too many people take it incorrectly. Okay, so to take your blood pressure, no tobacco, no exercise, no caffeine for at least an hour before your blood pressure is recorded sit down after you empty your bladder, you don't want to have a full bladder, that's going to change your blood pressure, sit down for about five minutes, 
put your arms on the table, feet flat on the floor, and you have to have the correct size blood pressure cuff. Unfortunately, the blood pressure cuffs that we all use nowadays are geared for people who are relatively small, people 150, 160, 170, 180 pounds. But when you get somebody 250 pounds or 300 pounds, that same cuff is not going to work, not going to give you an accurate reading, will give you a reading that's falsely elevated. What's the ideal blood pressure? There's even an argument about that. Argument about what the ideal blood pressure is and an argument about what level of elevation should trigger some kind of therapy. So traditionally, we would like the blood pressure to be less than 120 over less than 80. And we say it's borderline if it's 120 to 140. We say it's grade 1 hypertension if it's between 140 and 160 and grade 2 hypertension, 160, 180. Now, nobody argues with treating grade 2 hypertension if your blood pressure is more than 160. Everybody seems to be falling into the category somewhere between 140 and 160. It should be treated. The American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology recently came out and said, no, we want to start treating if it gets to be more than 130. That's poppycock, I think. Uh, my personal opinion, and a lot of other opinions. Most guidelines do not recognize that. Most guidelines, as I said, if you go to Europe, they don't even begin treating until you're 160 or more in many countries, some countries 150 and fewer countries 140, but only if you have some additional risk factor. Now, Losartan is going to be able to reduce that top number, the systolic number, by somewhere around 5 to 10 millimeters, 12 millimeters maybe, and it reduces the bottom number, the diastolic, but that's not usually a problem in people who are over age 50, but it'll reduce the bottom number by about 3, 5, 6, seven millimeters. If you add a little bit of hydrochlorothiazide, and that's the beauty of combining a low dose of one and a little bit of another. So when you combine the Losartan with 12 and a half milligrams of hydrochlorothiazide, then your systolic, instead of going down five to 10, will go down about 15 points. Then the diastolic will go down about nine points. Now, this is a first line therapy. But the question is, should you take an ACE inhibitor, which is a relative, that's lisinopril, say, or should you take losartan? Well, most people would say take the ACE inhibitor, but the ACE inhibitor in some people causes a cough. And if it causes a cough, don't take that one. Take the angiotensin receptor blocker, take the losartan. They're very closely related, except the lisinopril in some people causes a cough. The ARB, the losartan, doesn't cause the cough. But either one of them is going to be superior to taking a tenolol. And it seems like the angiotensin receptor blocker and the ACE inhibitor are both going to reduce cardiovascular morbidity and mortality to a heck of a lot greater extent than the atenolol. Now, additionally, the ACE inhibitors seem to have a good effect not only on the blood pressure, but also on the kidney function, especially if you happen to be a diabetic. And again, the ACE inhibitors and the Losartan work the same way. We would like you not to combine an ACE inhibitor and uh, an ARB, and certainly if you take either one of them, you shouldn't take a medicine like Tecturna. You get in trouble if you do that. Now, Remember, if you're diabetic, you want an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker because they're going to help preserve your kidney function. They're going to delay the onset of proteinuria if you haven't developed that. They're going to continue to help the kidney so you don't progress to kidney failure nearly as rapidly. But if you're going to take this drug, you have to make sure that you are not dehydrated. Not a good idea to be dehydrated or sodium depleted prior to the time you take the drug. And every once in a while, you have to monitor the kidney function. And you got to be a little bit careful because this has a tendency to push up the amount of potassium in the system. Now, if you happen to be volume depleted when you start taking this drug, either volume depleted or sodium depleted, or if you're taking a high dose of a diuretic, taking this one can cause you to have a significant fall in your blood pressure. And then you would become hypotensive. You stand up and you get dizzy and maybe you faint. 
So that's not a good idea. Well, as far as the left ventricular hypertrophy, remember I was talking about that, with the pressure of the heart and the enlargement of the muscle because it has to pump against such high pressure? Well, this does a heck of a lot better than that atenolol that we were talking about a moment ago. Compared to tenormin, which is a beta blocker, much better choice would be to take either an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. What kind of dose would you take? Typically it's going to be 50 milligrams a day, but if you're a little bit volume depleted, summertime you're working outside, you're sweating a lot, well maybe you begin at 25 milligrams. If you're type 2 diabetic, it's typically going to be 50 milligrams. If you have left ventricular hypertrophy, enlargement, we tell that from the electrocardiogram then you're probably going to be taking the 50 milligrams in combination with the diuretic, with a hydrochlorothiazide, the very low dose. Or you might even have to increase the Losartan to 100 milligram, and maybe you have to go up to 25 milligrams of the hydrochlorothiazide. And interestingly, even though it's really a one-a-day pill, you get a better effect if you cut the dose and take part in the morning and part at night. Fortunately, it works as well in elderly individuals as it does in younger people, and it works even if the only thing that's elevated is the top number, which is typical for adults. The maximum effect is going to be in four to eight weeks. You're going to get rid of it. A third of it's going out in the urine and two-thirds going out in your bowel movement. You should not take it if you're pregnant. If you become pregnant, you ought to stop it right away. Tell your doctor. But unfortunately, it's caused some problems with defects and it's caused infant death and for that reason women who are breastfeeding probably should not take this kind of a drug. Now it works by blocking some of the chemistry that we won't discuss inside the body but it blocks the production of something called aldosterone and something called angiotensin II. Those both have a tendency to constrict the vessels. So the way the Losartan works is it makes the vessels relax. So if the vessels relax, the heart is pumping into an easier chamber. The heart is pumping into the aorta and into the downstream vessels that aren't so constricted, and that makes the heart have to function with less vigor. And if it functions with less vigor, it doesn't use as much oxygen, doesn't use as much oxygen, and then you're better off. Well, does it have side effects? Sure, but they're not significant side effects. It might cause a little stuffy nose or some backache or something like that. Some people cause a little diarrhea. It can cause fatigue in some people, but not usually significant problem. It makes some of the uric acid go out in the urine, so if you happen to have uric acid kidney stones, that might be an issue. And you have to take it with caution if you're taking any kind of a medicine that might push the potassium up. So if you're taking aspirin or any of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen, you have to be careful, you have to be careful. If you're taking a sugar sub, I mean, a salt substitute, salt substitutes contain potassium, so you don't want to do that. And then if you're taking lithium, has some cross-reactions with phenobarbital and cimetidine, tagamet, and maybe with some warfarin. Got to be careful if you're taking clarithromycin or erythromycin. But otherwise, it seems to be a pretty easy pill for you to take. Unfortunately, most people are not going to pay attention to what we started off saying, where you need to have appropriate attention, pay appropriate attention to those other factors, the factors with your diet. You have to restrict the amount of sodium that you consume. Now, everybody says, geez, I don't even use a salt shaker. Now, that's not the point, because there's a very small percentage of salt in your diet that's going to be added by a salt shaker. Most of the salt that you get in your food is in the food when you buy it at the store. So if you look at the can of soup, if you look at the loaf of bread, if you look at the nutritional information, you're going to find a heck of a lot more sodium than you imagine. If you look at the cookies, if you look at a pretzel, lots and lots of sodium, and don't even think about uh, one of those chips or a potato chip. Well, you need to control your diabetes. You've got to get off the cigarettes. You have to cut down on your cholesterol. You've got to go out and get some exercise. Otherwise, you're going to be taking one, two, or three drugs. Now, we know that those people who pay attention to their diet and to their exercise 
and especially those people who consume extra fruit and vegetables and nuts and cut down on some of the other substances that we know aren't so healthy, have more complex carbohydrate, less simple carbohydrates, stop drinking the Coca-Cola, if you do that, just those factors alone are going to be equipotent, give you the same amount of blood pressure lowering effect as taking the Losartan. So that's very important. The cost, fortunately, because it's generic, you can go and buy it for less than $10 a month. If you want the brand name, if you want the Kozar, it's going to cost somewhere around $150 a month. So remember, if you have high blood pressure, number one, make sure you really do have high blood pressure. So take it, follow the rules that we mentioned earlier. Number two, if you do have high blood pressure, start off with those palliative changes that you can make. Get off the cigarettes, get off excessive alcohol. Start watching how much sodium you consume. More fruit, more vegetables, more nuts. Less of the junk food. And if you do that, you're going to get the same amount of benefit that you would if you happen to take the Losartan or a diuretic or any other kind of a pill. If those healthy measures don't work, then you can take a pill. But remember, the pill is only controlling your blood pressure. The pill will not reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. It's not going to reduce the risk of your ultimately developing cancer. All of those factors require lifestyle modification. Anyway, Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.